Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to a special episode of the uh, Blitzalytics Podcast Network to uh, do a little recap of the Senior Bowl. I'm your host, uh, Director of Scouting with Blitzalytics, Ryan Lippert, and I'm joined today by uh, three gentlemen. I'll let you all introduce yourselves individually, whoever wants to start. I mean, I'll start. I mean, uh, Chaz Turnbow, been a scout for Blitzalytics going on my third season, second, third, I think third. So, you know, I'm all I'm always down to talk prospects. So I'm excited to get going today. Um, Dominic Ambrose uh, just started with Blitzalytics. Excited to be a part of a great group of guys. Looking forward to uh, talking some football and talking some prospects. Yep, uh, Nathan Sabelka here. Uh, First year as well with Blitzlytics as a scout. Uh, first year going to the Senior Bowl and all that. Very excited to, to be a part of it. Yeah, so the four of us were able to uh, go down to Mobile last week for the Senior Bowl. little wet conditions, uh, but for the most part, great week, great networking. Saw a lot of great talent. Spoke to a lot of great football minds. Um, it was my first experience as well, and I enjoyed it. I definitely plan on being back. So, um that being said, we just kind of want to get into some of the guys that really stood out to us. Um, and I'll start on the offensive side of the ball. Um, to me, the main guy that stuck out to me, top offense, non-QB related, we'll get to that later. There's a lot of different opinions out there on draft Twitter right now with uh, the QB rankings. Um, but that stood out to me was interior offensive lineman Zion Johnson from uh, Boston College. I think he really – made himself some money this week, so to say. Showed a lot of versatility. He's played tackle and guard at Boston College, but took snap, a lot of snaps at center, which I thought was important for his stock. And they said he was even staying after practice and getting in snaps. So I like to see that in alignment. Showed great hands, footwork, got movement off the line of scrimmage. I mean, he really popped me. And he got the uh, MVP offensive honors for – the week of practice at the senior bowl. So that's a big thing as well. Um, also liked receiver uh, Christian Watson at uh, North Dakota state. He was very good one-on-one smooth route runner. Got some speed to him. Great hands, catches the ball with his hands. A lot of pluck there. So I think he played himself into a day two pick as well. I think somebody will pick him up and he'll be, know key rotational guy next year um so i'll pass the torch to whoever wants to get started who are some guys on offense non-qb related that stuck out to you this week um for me my personal favorite that i saw starting at the trenches i would say it was trevor penning the offensive tackle from northern iowa he was pretty dominant in one on ones, and I know that video went viral of him in the third day of practice that I did that we didn't get to attend, but where he was starting fights. <laughs> like I'm always very pro uh, bullies on the offensive line, and that's what he was doing, man. He was he was one of the few people, like few offensive linemen, that really held their own all week, because you know one on ones really is a hard. Thing to do for offensive linemen because you're you know, out, out on the out on the island and you don't have no help on your inside or anything like that. But he look he he held his own all week and he was really mean with it, which again I like. That's one of my big qualities in offensive linemen that I uh, that I value a lot. Another person that I liked outside the trenches was um, Damian Pierce, running back out of uh, running back out of Florida. He was. Stonewalling dudes and pass pro, which was really big. I try not to really pay much attention to run, like running backs is kind of a hard position to evaluate in practice because again they're just like that's a, that's a hard one to like see stand out. But a really a drill that's translatable is your pass protection and and also his weigh ins. He I think it was five nine two twenty, which stout bowling ball type of build and you show you can pass protect you can get on the field in the nfl so that was somebody i really like oh yeah i like what i saw from pierce too with his just with his running ability 
able to change direction quickly and efficiently and still hold on to the ball going through traffic. Um, I'm going to draw a blank on the guy's name, but the tight end from uh, Colorado State really stood out too as far as just offensive players. Um, thought he did well for himself, catching the ball, route running, showed himself to be a, a good weapon for an offense to pick him up in the next uh, at the next level in the NFL. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely think McBride will be, you know, top three tight ends at the very least once draft time comes. I mean, there's not really a guy that in this class, at least, at least to me, that's really taken himself to be that tight end one, really separate himself. Like we had Kyle Pitts last year. So I think there's going to be a few guys that are in that conversation and McBride definitely played himself into that conversation this week. Yeah, I agree. I, I think um, Isaiah likely from coastal Carolina really closed the gap on, on that. I think McBride coming in was kind of everyone's number one tight end, but I think likely, and even um, uh, Jeremy Rucker um, closed the gap on that a little bit and kind of made it a little bit more unclear who the top tight end was there. Um, I really like likely actually um, last week, he had really good routes, had good separation. I think he caught pretty much everything that came his way. Um, he had a really good week. Um, going back to Watson, um, obviously, I think everyone, I think he was kind of the talk last week of, of all of the offensive guys. Um, but he did everything. Uh, one thing that was, um, wasn't was mentioned earlier was the uh, blocking. Like he was, he was blocking downfield, clearing lanes. He was coming inside, sealing off linebackers. He was doing everything. So, that was really impressive to see too. He's a real hard worker and, and just does everything around there. Um, another guy, um, wideout wise, I think the um, Boise State wideout, uh, Khalil Shakur, I think he did uh, really well, especially on um, showing that he can get separation. He wasn't phased at the line very much. He can get away from people and then um, really create some separation and, and use his speed and quickness, especially on like in-breaking routes. Um, he did really well there. Kind of, kind of stood out to me on the wide receiver position. Somebody else I wanted to bring up um, for wide receivers because they're not really going to get that much love just because of measurables. But Calvin Austin, the third out of Memphis, is he was cooking defensive backs all week, and he was just he's just five seven, and but. If Tutu Atwell can get drafted in the second round, I don't know why Calvin Austin wouldn't be able to get drafted that high. It's just he was dominating all def – no defensive back could hold him all week. So, yeah, I mean, with him, to me, if you've got the speed to get open, nobody can guard you, then that size really isn't going to matter at the end of the day. You can get open and catch the ball and make plays. I mean, we've seen some smaller receivers do it. Like you're – I'm not comparing him to Tyreek Hill, but like guys like that – you know, smaller guys, but they can they can still make plays in the league. But um, moving on a little bit, um, the offensive line class to me in this group it was a little up and down. We'll get to the defensive line a little later, but I think defensive line group kind of dominated a little bit. But um, saw some interesting things. I thought at tackle, like uh, Chaz said. Trevor Penning, he showed his mean streak, and that's going to look really good in scouts' eyes that want to put him in either, a, you know, like a right tackle or offensive guard type where you're asking him to be a mauler in the run game. Um, that's a guy I wouldn't mind seeing my Steelers take a look at if he's there just because I know we're going to have to establish the run with Najee Harris, and that type of guy is going to open some holes for you. Um, another guy that is – kind of the same breath as pinning in that regard is uh, Daniel Falele from uh, Minnesota. I mean, he caught everybody's eye, I think, first day. I mean, because he's just a mountain of a man. Um, he showed a lot of um, intrigue in the run game just because, I mean, look at his size. I mean, he's got the strength and first step. He's going to create that movement off the line. I'd like to see a little more out of him in pass pro just – I think he's going to struggle a little bit with some speed rushers on the outside, but he also did show a couple reps where he showed that versatility there. So 
I think he's definitely a guy that's still going to be, you know, late first, early second round range. I think somebody's going to really take a chance on him there as well. And on the interior, there are a couple guys I like that are kind of under the radar a little bit. Um, Luke Fortner, center out of Kentucky, looked good against some of the bigger D tackles, showed a good anchor, and showed that he has the strength to really compete with those guys. And then uh, Cole Strange, the uh, guard out of uh, Utah, uh, UT Chattanooga, he looked good against some of those bigger names. I mean, he didn't really get a whole lot of competition during the season, so it was nice to see him being able to move around some of those bigger school guys and really show his skill in the pass pro as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't. I think those are probably the the names on the O line that are uh, uh, stood out in any kind of way. I think the rest of them kind of blended together a little bit, um, you know, had their moments here and there, but most of the time seemed to struggle a little bit. Um, I mean, the def- we'll get, like I said, we'll get to the defensive line group, but there was some, uh, there were some good ball players in that group that were just a force to <laughs> go against that o- o line that uh, last week. Yeah. I mean, I definitely like, uh, Falele, just the size and everything, and definitely in that in a good scheme, I think you can counter or give him a little bit of help and protection until he gets caught up with the or more adept to the speed rushers coming on the edge. Um, I was kind of surprised, maybe I missed it, but uh, Bernard Raymond, the other lineman out of Central Michigan. Um, I didn't really see him stand out too much, but I've seen him get all sorts of hype too. Uh, don't know if you guys had any thoughts on it. I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm like you. I didn't really see him stand out that much. I mean, he, but he's been getting a lot of praise. So I mean, that might be something I have to go back and watch the tape on a little more. But um, that's, uh, I mean, that's one of those things too where. Some people could be keying in on certain guys they like. We kind of talked about that in Mobile a little bit. You know, people come in with those guys are really high on, and so they're going to see the strengths there in practice. So that that could have a little to do with it, but who knows? You could go back and watch the practice tape and be like, wow, it's a whole different story than the eyes showed me at first glance. Yeah, I mean – like like Nathan said, a lot of the other offensive linemen really kind of blended together. Nobody really stood out like that. I would say if anybody else would probably be Luke Gecky from uh, Central Michigan. But I, I really didn't see much of him from the second practice. From the first practice, he had a, he had a few good reps in the one-on-ones at guard. But, um, yeah, other than that, I, I feel like not many other people warranted a call out. You know what I mean? Nobody else really – made that mark on me at least but yeah and unless anybody else has any other offensive guys i think we did a good job of really pointing out the key guys i mean everybody that you all mentioned are guys that stuck out to me and i had made notes on during the week but down to the interesting top or interesting topic of offense the quarterbacks um I've seen, especially since I've been back home since Mobile, there's been a lot of differing takes on the quarterback week that I found interesting. Um, like, during during the whole week of practice, the thing I noticed for this quarterback group, they had a lot of great moments and a lot of really bad moments. Um, a lot of up and down, especially that first day. Like, the first day I left practice, like, ooh, I don't know which one of these quarterbacks I would touch. And then – as the week went on, they they improved a little bit. Um, my QB one, I'm gonna go ahead and say it right now, still is Malik Willis. I think he showed the most at uh, Senior Bowl week. I mean, obviously, we've all seen his athletic ability, ability to escape the pocket. He really displayed that during the game, able to create something out of nothing and make some big time runs. Um, the arm talent's definitely there, but it's great zip on the ball. Very strong arm. His accuracy is going to need a little tuning up. 
Uh, he's a little sporadic in that area, but I think he's he has the highest ceiling of these quarterbacks. Uh, I think we all talked about their mobile Pitt, Kenny Pickett. He's the other guy in the conversation. I think he might be the most pro ready, but his ceiling's a lot lower. Um, he has a little better accuracy, but his his tools. I don't know how much growth is going to be there. Um, and then you had the other quarterbacks. Sam Howell played decent. I don't think he did anything to really kill or help his stock. Um, Desmond Ritter, he was on and off during the week of practice, played a little better in the game. I've been seeing a little bit of high praise from him, surprisingly, but I think he was near the bottom of the QB group. Carson Strong, I think, hurt himself. Uh, he's known for his arm talent and he showed some long throws, but they were kind of oof, kind of all over the place and sailed like he was sailing some bubble routes. I was watching him warm up, so I was like, That's that's not the time you show off your arm strength. Um, Bailey Zappi, he was kind of the wild card. I think he helped himself a little bit. I think because I've been seeing a lot of people even slide him into their top five and kick. Well, these other guys out. So, I mean, he showed good accuracy. He showed he can throw with the best of them. So, I think he's a guy to maybe watch somewhere day two, early day three. Um, so, what are your all's thoughts on this QB class? Who who you think really is going to stand out towards the top that teams are going to like? And who do you think might have hurt themselves this week? Um. I'll start with who hurt themselves was Desmond Ritter. Man, uh, I, I uh, granted, I've never really been that high on Desmond Ritter, uh, but I do think he was the worst QB there this week. Um, he just his his play speed is so slow. You can tell that he's like working to do everything that he's trying to do, and it's like he's he has slow throwing motion, slow foot mechanics. It's just everything just – every he makes everything look like a struggle, and you got to make the easy stuff look easy, and he just doesn't. So it's like he was somebody that really, like, t- stopped down for me, like, greatly. Um, but Malik Willis was QB1. I do agree with you there. Um, leaving the first practice, everybody was saying, like, Oh, he was like having a great day and everything. I didn't see that. I saw a bunch of inconsistency. Um, I saw people say that he had some of the best throws, some of the worst throws, which I do agree with. But it's just this quarterback class in general, like you said, doesn't really have a day one starter. But so I think Malik Willis could find himself as QB one just because of his upside and his tools. He has he had probably the livest arm at the senior bowl. He probably had, he, he definitely had the best mobility and, um, and escapability and off script ability at the senior bowl. So if anything, somebody's going to take a gamble on that, how high they take a gamble on that. I don't know. I'm not really buying into the top five talk, but if you need a quarterback, why not take the shot on Willis? I think people have learned from, the whole oh Lamar Jackson has like he's just or he's he's a running back. Let's get him in the running back drills or wide receiver drills of the combine, all that stuff. And they kind of like sold on his arm and his mobility. I think people kind of learned that lesson. Not saying that Malik Willis is going to be Lamar Jackson, but why not take a chance on somebody who could be that versus drafting, you know, Carson Strong in the twenties, you know what I mean? So We'll see on that, but those are the two ends of the spectrum. I think everybody else kind of just blended together. Carson Strong's, like you said, his he did throw the ball far, but it did not look pretty. A lot of arm punts, a lot of ducks. It's like balls just tail off. Yeah. <laughs> He's trying to throw it as high as he can, and they just like fall back down to earth with a sputter. It's just weird. So nobody else really impressed me like that. I think Malik stock went up because everybody else's stock did not. Yeah. And like, like you said, with the Lamar um, comparison to Malik, I mean, 
people were definitely proven wrong with Lamar. So I think that's a lesson to learn. I also think Willis has shown a little better arm talent than Lamar coming out of college. He's had a little more chances to show that because I think Louisville really toned in on Lamar's running ability in college. But I think that's something to take into consideration as well when you start talking, you know, is he a complete package quarterback because he has shown that arm talent as well. So I think that's – I think he's definitely a player to watch. Um, I've seen a lot of uh, talk, I mean, with the Steelers – Tomlin really liked him all week, but it's like he's going to have to trade up to get him for a lot of people are saying. Don't know yet if I'm willing to trade up for any of these quarterbacks, but, I mean, that remains to be seen, I guess. Yeah, I think the uh, – I think I agree with both you guys on on Willis being the, the number one. Um, and just from what I saw last week at the – senior bowl. And then just with talking everyone, I think everyone's pretty much in agreement. Willis was the one and Ritter was the the sixth out of, out of last week. Um, just the inconsistency, like Chaz talked about with, with Ritter, the way he played, he just did not look good. And, and the mechanics and stuff were there. So it's not like you're seeing a lot of stuff that can be fixed. Um, it was just slow and inconsistent and the, the accuracy wasn't there. Those other guys, the other four guys, I think, you could rank them, you know, two through five in any way. And I don't, I wouldn't have an argument. Uh, you can make an argument either way for those, uh, those, those rankings. Um, I think, uh, you know, draft wise, Willis, uh, Pickett and probably Corral are your top three, uh, depending on what order they go in, you know, that's going to depend on team preference. I think Willis obviously has the high, highest ceiling out of all three of those. Um, Pickett might be the most ready, but, like like Ryan said, he's probably already at his ceiling. I don't know how much more you're going to get out of him growth wise. Um, Corral obviously wasn't there, so we didn't get a look at him. But um, and then the other guys, you're you, you know you're looking at Carson Strong, who's got a big arm. But if you want a big arm, take more upside on Willis. You know that that type of thing on 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 thinking wise. Mm-hmm. Um, but no one can touch him on the athleticism. So the the ceiling's there for Willis. He's he's obviously the one for me at least. Yeah, I think he he definitely grew into the one through that week of practice and everything. Um, I know on the game, I was kind of disappointed that I didn't get to see him show his arm as much as I as I was wanting to, knowing that he had that accuracy concern or that I had that accuracy concern with him. I think I would have liked to have seen him make more throws. Um, but athletic ability, like you guys have been saying, is above and beyond everybody else. And I think uh, Zappi is going to be that dark horse that people are going to take a gamble on. So, Yeah, I, I like Zappi. I thought he um, uh, showed me a bit more arm strength than what I saw on tape from him. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that, that was the big knock on him coming in was, you know, he, he didn't have the arm strike. He just kind of was real accurate with everything. And I think he showed – you know, in person at least, that that the arm strength was a little bit more than what um, I saw on tape. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't. I mean, personally, I don't see him going higher than maybe beginning of day three type of thing. He might yeah, slip into yeah, end sure. of day two, but but yeah. So how many how many quarterbacks, including Corral, do we think go first round this year? Which, I mean, there's a lot to be seen still because, I mean, we're going to have the trade carousels. I mean, some of – I mean, some of these top – at least one of these top names is going to go. Um, like your Rodgers, Wilson, uh, Carr, those, those type of guys. At least one of those guys is going to get moved around. Maybe even Kyler Murray now. There's been rumblings. I don't think so either. But there's been that talk now, so – at least mention his name, I guess. But how many do we think at the end of the day could go first round? I'm going to say three. Three. But I don't like it at all. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. if if my team needed a quarterback and they drafted a quarterback in the first round, I'll probably not feel comfortable with that this year. Well, 
Of course you, of course you wouldn't. You've got Joe Burrow. I said <laughs> if my team had a quarterback <laughs> or didn't have a quarterback. What do you mean? I, I, I'm trying to be neutral here. Yeah, I think three. I, I think three. I think it's the you know Pickett, Corral, and and Willis in some order. I think those three go. I think there's going to be teams that are like the Saints. I think are pretty much locked into taking quarterback. Yeah. I don't see them a way they trade for someone. I don't. I think they're they're pretty much set on taking one. I think there's a couple other teams that probably will, um, but I, I think guys like Strong and Ritter and stuff are going to be in the second. Yeah, I, three seems like it, but I'd say the third one is probably going to be one of those trade back into the later half of the third round or the first round rather and just snatch someone up that happened to slide. I, I don't yeah. see anybody mortgaging a lot to move up into top 10, top 15 kind of thing. Nah. Yeah. yeah, to me, I mean, the teams that really stick out, I mean, there's been a lot of talk between of the Panthers at six – between do they take quarterback or O-line. I personally think they should take a tackle because that O-line is atrocious, and they just uh, signed or picked up Sam Darnold's fifth year. So, um, But, I mean, the fit would be there, I think, for Willis. Don't agree with the pick there, but I don't think that will be something to be completely upset about as a Panthers fan. Um, then I think Denver is going to depend what they do in the off season. Of course. I mean, there's a lot of talk with Rogers there. Mm -hmm. I think if he leaves green Bay, they're probably front runners there to get him. But if they don't get anybody, I think Pickett makes a lot of sense for them. And then, you know, you got your Washington commanders. I think they're going to be in the market saints. Like you said, they're pretty much locked in. And then Steelers, I, <laughs> I don't want us to draft a quarterback first round. We have an offensive line need or best player available need at this point. But, I mean, Tomlin flirted with Willis a lot in Mobile, so who knows? He, he could do it. I mean, I wouldn't be, like, breaking everything if we picked him, but I don't think he's the best pick there. So I'd say out of those teams, I'd say maybe three, I think, mean, Pickett, Willis, and Corral, definitely. And, I mean, if there's a wild card, maybe Sam Howell. I've seen a couple mocks with him slipping into late first. But, I mean, I think three's the safe route with this group, if there is a safe route. The only thing worse than draft, like I said, I would feel uncomfortable with it. I would feel really uncomfortable if my team traded up to draft a quarterback in this <laughs> Yes. So, like, maybe if you trade back into the late, like if Carolina, you know, trades with, you know, some team that's like picking 30 or something and then they just slide up from like to take Kansas City to be like, oh, we'll give you a third round. All right. That's nothing crazy. But if you if you make a Justin Fields type jump to go grab somebody crazy, crazy, I will not. I will not be in well, That's my thing. I think the trade up, especially with. This class, like to trade up into the top 10, I think it would be crazy. But I think in any draft, I think you really got to be, you got to do your due diligence and really be in love with the guy. And that's got to be your guy. There can't be any question marks in your head if you're trading up into the top 10 for a quarterback this year. Mm -hmm. There's no, there's no like consensus this year, like a, like, Trevor Lawrence was, or like Burrow, or guys like that, where they're gonna go top five. Yeah, no doubt, you gotta take them top five. Like, there's no guys like that this year. Yeah, I will say, you know, if Willis hits that ceiling, we'll be looking back on it in four or five years and oh, saying, absolutely. "Oh man, they made a they're geniuses for trading up for him," you know that type of thing. But uh, yeah, those are the question marks you got to answer beforehand. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. I mean, I'm perfectly fine with you know Ryan Steelers drafting a quarterback this year in the first round. That'd be nice. <laughs> get some get some Carson Strong action. You know? No, I, I think I think the Steelers are getting a veteran somewhere. Yeah, yeah. I think I think we sign a bridge guy. Honestly, unless they surprise and throw the table at one of these big names in a trade, I think we get a bridge guy to compete with Mason and hopefully start over Mason. <laughs> 
But, um, yeah, I think that wraps up the offensive side of the ball. I mean, pretty good group, I think, there. Um, lots of different pieces and names, I think, that you're going to be looking at, like with your Watsons and your Damian Pierce and guys like that, you're going to be looking at day two that are going to really make an impact early on. So I think that's – there's a lot there's a lot of value in this group in the draft. Um, so moving on, uh, the defensive side of the ball – I mean, I think we had some studs on defense this year, like some high caliber, like starter type guys. Um, the best player, I think, was the consensus there for most people out of any player in Mobile was Jermaine Johnson this week, the edge rusher out of Florida State. I mean, he was just dominating guys. He was uh, showing strength with a bull rush. He was showing quickness with pass rush moves, like – he was all over the place, especially that first day. I mean, he went against my boy Darian Kennard and was tearing him up all day. And they then, I mean, they went back at the end of practice, dominated him the first rep. Kennard got him the last two, but he, I think he really set the tone this week and I think played himself into a top 10, 12 conversation there. Um, probably top three or four edge right now in a very, loaded edge class, especially at the top. Um, and then some other guys on D-lines, I mean, Travis Jones, I liked him coming in. I wanted to see him against better competition, and he was just eating up blocks. I mean, he was a handful, especially in bull rush. I mean, strong, explosive first step, violent, liked him. Uh, Preyon Winfrey was another guy. If Johnson wouldn't have been there, Winfrey would probably be my guy on defense. I'd the main thing that stood out to me with him, I mean, he has a lot of versatility there, but I just loved his motor. He was constantly working to beat guys in uh, pass rush one-on-ones, showing an array of moves, strength. So he really stood out to me. Uh, Roger McCreary, I think, helped himself to showing that he could play in the slot. I think it's going to be a nice little spot for him there. Um, and Chad Muma, that's one of my draft guys right now. He just a missile out of his stance at middle linebacker, uh, Wyoming. I think he's going to be an early day two guy now and going to be a plug and play starter if put in the right system. Uh, and he showed some athleticism, like he can cover as well. So that's that's a guy I'm excited about. See where he lands. Um, so with that being said, who were some guys that really stood out to you all on defense? Um. Obviously, Jermaine Johnson, I'm not going to get too much into that because we all know how well he played and everybody saw how dominant he was and everything. But one of my favorite edges was Majai Sanders. He was playing with a lot of uh, energy, coming off the edge quick. He looked really great in the movement skills. And he did look a little slender, so he's probably going to be limited to, you know, uh, three, four outside rush outside linebackers. So. We might want to. We might see him drop a little bit at the combine. See how he does in coverage. See what they do with that. But he was one of my favorites going in, and he stock up for me. So even better on the interior. Winfrey was one of my guys as well. He looked well. He played out of position in Oklahoma, but he's very explosive. It's clear he won the game MVP. So we saw that pairing Winfrey that we knew he was going to be good. Um, DeAndre Wyatt looked really good out of Georgia. Um, he looked explosive. He looked twitchy, moved really well from his size. So it was a lot of good penetrating three techs that you could see. And those those three really – like those three linemen really stood out to me. Um, one of my favorite – probably my favorite person to watch on defense was Roger McCree. Um, seeing him uh, – seeing him play – they slut like when they went seven on seven and eleven on elevens. They started putting him in the nickel, and he looked really and he looked really good there. So he was one of my favorite prospects to watch. Good good feet. My favorite thing to watch at a corner. Good uh, good hip put or good hip fluidity, all that. So he was one of my favorites and one of my big winners out of today or out of the Senior Bowl week. Yeah. Uh... Like you said, Jermaine Johnson, Perry and Winfrey, both those guys uh, really stood out. Um, Perry and Winfrey, I think, may have talked himself up or played himself up into a first round, first round type of talk. Um, just the way he dominated, I think 
they had to like change up their blocking scheme on like the inside zone runs because he was just he was just wrecking the whole drills. So uh, he he really showed a lot. Um, one of the other edge guys that really stood out showed up on day two. Sam Williams really impressed me. He was just blowing by everybody when he got out there and started working. Um, just his 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 ball get off was incredible, and then he would just dip around, bend around the edge there, and was just eating up every tackle out there. He really impressed me a lot. Um, yeah, Roger McCurry was one of my guys. He he kind of just solidified everything that I had, I had seen him before. Um, he was sticking on everybody, but the other the other D back I really like was Kobe Bryant. Um, I thought he had a really good week. Um, he looked really like really fluid. Uh, he was sticking with everybody. Um, people people caught some balls on him, but he had good coverage in those situations, from what I saw. And um, he, he even had a good number of reps where he punched the ball out. Um, he was right on top of him. I, I really liked his play. He stood out to me on the on the outside there. Um, I think he he like you said earlier. I think he's a guy that made himself some money there. Um, yeah, Travis Jones was another guy. I think he was just just real high motor. Um, uh, eating up on the inside there, but yeah, those those were the guys um, in particular. Sam Williams stood out. Um, I think he probably more more than the um, the other two, Jermaine and, and Perry. On, I think he stood out most, especially day two. Yeah, for me, I mean, I like the guys that you said. Uh, I thought Maffey had a great game and just really turned it on and put everything together there. Just tore up offensive line during the game. Um, I like the Tyreek Smith from Ohio State, too. I thought he was quick off the edge and just consistent with that high motor and just getting past the initial blockers. Um, yeah. But there were others along the defense, like especially on the line that had their moments. I think uh, – Big, uh, Arnold. Um, yeah, I'm gonna put. I knew I was gonna butcher his name, <laughs> um, but I thought he did uh, well for himself. That people at least go and want to revisit the film to see if they missed something on game compared to what he did at the Senior Bowl. Um, but yeah, I thought Ridgeway did decently too. Yeah, along the line. Oh, okay. I know th there was a couple other guys. They they kind of moved positions into what more they would be playing in the NFL. Um, the the Sterling Weatherford moving up more, playing more linebacker role, mm -hmm. and uh, same with D'Angelo Malone moving back off uh, into the linebacker, playing coverage, things like that. Uh, I thought they uh, I thought they did well um, moving into roles that they haven't really played before in college, and probably what they're going to be projected at in the NFL. I thought they, they did a really good job. Um, Malone was a kind of an underrated guy, but I think he impressed. He had some good pass rush uh, reps as well as in coverage. He looked competent. He looked, he didn't look uncomfortable out there. So I thought he helped himself as well. Yeah. I really liked that they did that with Malone, especially getting deeper into the week because I mean, he's his frame, I think is going to suit him. At linebacker, like stand in like a stand up edge. Um, I don't think he's gonna have his hand in the dirt by any means. Um, he was a guy that I just kind of noticed just watching the coaches' interactions. I just noticed that, like, especially like the D line linebackers coach were like very excited about him. Like, like they got they just got really hyped up whenever he made a play or something. So that I think that spoke a little bit to me. Um, a couple of other guys I liked, uh, Troy Anderson, the linebacker at Montana State. I thought he had a good week, uh, very good at reading his keys, coming downhill quick against the run. And he showed that he can drop into coverage as well. Um, and then day one, uh, he disappeared a little bit on me throughout the week, but uh, Tariq Castro Fields, uh, corner at Penn State, uh, very physical. I, I like that at corner to man coverage. Um, not so much to where – he was grabby a little time, little bit of times, and that could get him at the next level. But I just liked he was jamming guys at the right out of the routes. He was in their hip pocket, and that first day I didn't see him lose a single rep in one on ones. Like he showed that he can stick with guys, and I think that I mean obviously that's gonna be a big deal. The next level is ability to flip his hips and mirror receivers. So I think he 
kind of helped his stock a little bit as well. Anybody got anything else? You, you all like? have any other guys on defense that you liked or – or anybody that hurt themselves on defense either. That's something I didn't think about. Let me get, give, give me a second. Let me say, I, <laughs> notes. I had, I know uh, at least I, some of the notes I had, I know people were impressed with Logan Hall later on in the week, but I thought day one, he had a real rough day um, getting acclimated maybe. Um, but one of the one-on-one -on -one drills he had, I thought were real rough. I don't I think he got stalled every every rep I saw of him. Um, but I, I didn't really catch him a whole lot the in the later in the week. Um, I was kind of, you know, had my eye on these other guys, Sam Williams and those guys that, that we were talking about. Um, Hello? Logan Hall, that's a name that I kind of thought of with this too, because he was a guy I came into it with, with kind of high expectations because there is a lot, he's getting a lot of love even before the senior bowl, but I just, I mean, he wasn't horrible, but I just wasn't, he didn't blow me away. But like, I mean, that's another guy I might have to go back and watch film on. Cause like you said, I get home, I see on Twitter, like all these people just raving about him. I'm like, uh, I don't know. Also the safety group in this senior bowl, I just wasn't, wasn't great to me. I mean, I didn't have super high expectations. Yeah, uh, Verone McKinley come in late, so he didn't really get to show as much. I think he could have done well if he would have had a couple more days. Um, Kirby Joseph probably stood out the most, but there's even – I mean, he's a day three guy probably. Um, so that, that group was kind of a little disappointing. I would have liked to see somebody kind of – separate themselves in that group. I got two more notes. It's one of the losers on defense were the opt-outs. The people that went to go see Devin Lloyd and he didn't show up. Yes. And, oh my gosh. And Jaquan Brisker. Those two, I will never forgive you until probably next week. But either way, I was upset. <laughs> Y'all weren't there and I wanted to see you guys in action. But two guys that we didn't mention earlier during the positive spins uh, uh, Lucada Jesse Lucada from Penn State, he looked really good, especially on day one. And Boye Mafe, uh, no, nobody, nobody here mentioned him, and he had a really good week. Um, oh, you didn't? I didn't even, I didn't hear him. That's my fault, but yeah, he he had a uh, he had a really good week. Um, yeah. like he might get consideration at the back end of the first round, so. I, I will say I think all the other linebackers need to thank Dave and Lloyd, though, because they kind of were able to shine a little bit better. I think if Lloyd was there, I think all eyes would have been on him, and and those other guys may not have uh, yeah, stood Lloyd, out as much. Lloyd's one of my favorite prospects in this whole draft, so I was very butthurt when I saw he wasn't going to be participating. Um, I mean, just, there was a lot of opt-outs this year, though. Like That, that was kind of – Wild, I don't know if it was COVID concerns or agents telling them not to or injury related, but I just noticed, especially like the day before, like there are a bunch of guys like this guy's not playing, this guy's not playing. Like Lloyd and Brisker and like James Cook, I was looking forward to seeing mm -hmm. uh, guys like that. I think could have, I mean, Devin Lloyd, I mean, he's going to be top 15 pick regardless, but some of those guys I feel like could have really helped themselves, but. It's still a long process. Still got pro days and combine, all that good stuff. So a lot of opinions could change by then. Yeah. So any, yeah, uh, I think the, sorry, go ahead, Nate. I was gonna say I think the two, the the one safety I think did he was a little bit inconsistent, but was the uh, the Baylor safety, uh, Jalen Petrie. Yeah, is that yeah, was Petrie? I thought um, he was probably the best of the group. Um, he did have some some inconsistent reps there and, and was a little bit out of place, but I thought overall was uh, probably the best of the group there. Um, uh, the one other guy, the, the Baylor running back, uh, Abram Smith, I thought, yeah. I thought he looked good coming out of the backfield, um, which I wasn't expecting. 
I thought, um, you know, he'd be more of a inside run type, uh, bigger back type of guy, but I thought he, he showed some good, uh, good routes, good ability coming out of the backfield that, um, I just wasn't expecting. Smith had a great game as well. Had a couple of touchdowns, one receiving, one rushing. I mean, he, he looked good. Uh, Devontae Smith, De, or not Smith, uh, Devontae Price, Florida National running back, he looked good as well. Great vision, and I mean, he's got that burst through the hole. Once he sees it, I mean, he's hitting it. Mm-hmm. So I think he helped himself a little bit as well. I think that a uh, linebacker from Georgia Tech kind of capitalized on some of the opt outs too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Tariq Carpenter. I think he uh, had a solid uh, performance through the week, especially in the game. I saw him make a lot of good like tackles and all. Yeah. And a guy, a guy that definitely passed the eye test and kind of blew, <laughs> blew some of us away was Darian Beavers, the linebacker for uh, Cincinnati. He showed up and mm-hmm. Chad pointed him out to me. I was like, what? That's Darian Beavers? I was like, that guy's huge. That's a, that's a big middle linebacker. I mean, he looked good throughout the week as well, so that he can play some coverage and come in as a uh, blitzing linebacker. So I think he's definitely going to be a day two guy to watch out for. Man, yeah, I man, thought with really good movement, speed, really good movement skills. What are you about to say, Nate? I was about to say I thought uh, Beavers and Sanders switched bodies or something. Yeah, <laughs> Beavers came in. Beavers came in looking huge, and Sanders looked a little bit more trim. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I think that's about it for my thoughts from Senior Bowl. Like I said, great group. Uh, looking forward to seeing how the pro days and combine kind of play itself out because I think there's still a lot of questions to be answered with a lot of these position groups. And, I mean, I think this this draft is really, especially first round, really up in the air. There's not going to be many consensus picks, I think, till very, very late. Um, so, uh, does anybody else have any closing thoughts before we uh, wrap things up here? No, from yeah, I, I, I like seeing the, uh, the way the coaches ran their practices too. Yes. Um, especially like the, was it the, um, the lions coaches, what they ran the competitive drills at the end of each practice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like that was real fun to see. That was, that was, that was good to see the, uh, the intensity they ran the practice with and everything. Yeah, I think that spoke a lot to Dan Campbell's personality, too, because I was listening to him at Media Day, and he was talking about Deuce Daly and how intense he is. And he was like, if you don't come with this type of intensity, you're you're not going to do well on this staff. So, I mean, I think I spoke a lot to him. I mean, we have all seen the snippets from interviews and stuff like that with him. So I think it was cool to see that kind of pan out from a wider perspective in the practices. Anybody else? Dominic, anything? No, nah, I mean, it was, I like you had mentioned earlier, I, it was my first time too, and it was a great experience. You know, I, yeah. returning to work was a, a struggle to say the least. <laughs> it was a long week coming back from Mobile. Yep. <laughs> All right, but um, wrap things up. Uh, Everybody go around the room and uh, say where people can find you out on social media, where else they might find your work. Um, like I said, I'm uh, the director of scouting at Blitzalytics. Uh, obviously, you can find my work there. I uh, also write for a uh, Steelers website called Steel City Underground. I'm going to be doing a lot of draft podcasts with them as well this offseason. Um, you can find me on all social media at Lippert42. So uh, shoot me a follow there. Uh, so, fellas, I'll let you – uh, take over and let the people know where they can find you. Yeah, I'm uh I'm at CC NFL Draft on Twitter. Um, you can catch me catch me writing my work at Blitzalytics. I also write for Whole Nine Sports. I also have some uh have some um, draft reports coming out for DTR. So just let me just follow me. You'll see all my work. Dominic, where can people find you at? Uh, you can find me with Blitzalytics. I write for a dolphin site called Fin Fanatic as well. On uh, Twitter, go ahead and find me at uh, Dom Ambrose 10. 
Shoot me a follow. I'll keep you up to date. Yep. Um, and I am on Blitzlytics as well. I'm doing a mock draft on there. Um, and then uh, on Twitter at Nate Kansas. And uh, everyone, make sure you tune into Blitzlytics on the website and on Twitter. We're going to be starting our interns have been working very hard behind the scenes, getting the uh, draft board together, start piling out our scouting reports onto the website. So those will be coming very, very soon. And uh, a lot of draft content coming out, mock drafts, podcasts, sky reports, all that good stuff. And then, of course, you know, breaking news stuff and team-related stuff. So a lot happening. A lot happening right now. Blitzalytics, a lot to be excited about. So I um, think that wraps things up. Thank you guys for coming on. Uh, thank you guys for listening, and you all have a good one.